Hi, thank you for joining me. Today, I want to talk about the truth-telling child that comes out of a narcissistic family, the one that knows something isn't right. If you like my content, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. When growing up in narcissistic homes, children develop different ways of coping. One of the types of children that come out of the narcissistic home is the truth teller. This type can develop from being the devalued child, scapegoated, being blamed for the family's problems and responsibilities. There may be thoughts of not being treated fairly or equally, feeling rejected and not being enough. These children don't tend to have blind obedience or loyalty to the cause. These children tend to rebel and be insubordinate against the family system with a knowing that something just isn't quite right. They know there's something wrong with the behavior in the house. In a lot of cases, they are the sensitive child. They tend to be very empathetic, deep thinkers. They tend to see things for what they are, but may also have a hard time speaking up about them. They may grow up to be visionaries take a job that is of service for people. A lot of them become entrepreneurs so they can stay away from drama in the workplace and be independent. They fight for the underdog, standing up for people who are being bullied because they don't wanna see anyone in pain as they know what that pain feels like. The downside is they could feel overly responsible for helping people to the point of giving too much of themselves for others all while not fulfilling their own needs, sacrificing themselves. They can have the ability to push themselves too far and hold on to high amounts of stress and burden, pushing through longer than what's healthy, as they have learned how to endure hardship, stress, and trauma for long periods of time, which is one of the reasons why it's easier for them to get into narcissistic relationships in adulthood, as they can deal with this trauma for long periods of time not seeing red flags as clearly as someone who has grown up in a happy, healthy home. Growing up with narcissistic parents can feel like being on edge. Like when you see a cop on the road driving behind you, you automatically think, what am I doing wrong? You check your speed and everything else to make sure you're good. It's similar, similar to that with your narcissistic parent walking on eggshells. The truth teller wants to find a way to stop the family dysfunction. They typically want the family to love each other. They long to, have, to feel close to their parents without being able to attain it. When they try to say something to the family and speak up, the family doesn't ask why they feel that way or want to know what they're thinking. Instead, it would look something like being shut down and told how good they have it while being looked at like they're crazy. The truth teller may reach out to friends for help, but if that friend hasn't experienced narcissism, they may have a hard time understanding that it's possible for someone's parent to treat them in such an unloving way, and they could be looked at as though they're lying. If a child reaching out for help gets shut down, it could amplify the silence that they're already used to. Not growing up in a home where they were encouraged to speak up and having low self-esteem. For the truth teller, it can be painful and something they're especially sensitive to, to be called a liar or to get looked at skeptically as though they are lying or to be accused of something they didn't do. So it may amplify and deepen their silence. Fighting against this thought process while trying to make a stand can leave them feeling even more stuck. But if that truth teller reaches out to someone and they support them and can be there for them as they're going through it, then they're one of the lucky ones. That amount of support can make a huge difference for the truth teller, having someone that understands, listens, and believes them. Another part to this is while the truth teller may know there's something wrong in the family system and their family is telling them they're crazy for thinking this, they may have moments that proves it to them, which can validate their feelings. For me, one of my aha moments was when I was over at a friend's house and I saw the way my friend's mom had love and kindness in her eyes when she spoke to their child and the love in the communication between the two. As I stood there watching them, my mind was blown. 
I couldn't believe that parents actually could have a relationship with their child in that way. Even though I knew there was something wrong in my family, it was still mind blowing for me to see a loving family in real life. I think it's common when you're a child growing up to think that the way that your family is and the way that you're being raised is the way that everybody's family is. And then when you see firsthand that there are actually families out there who are loving and kind and generous parents and actually want to spend quality connected time with their child, it can be validating for the child who has never had that and longs for feeling a close connection to their parents and siblings. In my family, it seemed commonplace that the parents held all the control. They told you what to do, how to do it, what to think, what to say, what not to say. It felt like being more of a possession that they owned. And it came across that that's how parents were supposed to be. That was their job as a parent. Another moment I had that validated my feelings of knowing something wasn't right was when I first heard the phrase, daddy's girl. When I heard the phrase daddy's girl, I thought it was fictitious out of a fairy tale, that it was something imagined like the cartoon, The Little Mermaid. It's not real. But then as I learned more about it and actually saw people in those types of relationships, I soon realized it was a real thing, that people actually have these types of connections. It was another moment proving my case that there was something wrong in my family. Also then being followed by a deep, sadness, an internal feeling of pure loneliness that I didn't really have a family that I truly connected with. At the time when you're in it as a child, it can seem like the worst punishment. And that can be amplified even more if there's a golden child that's put on, that's put on a higher pedestal than you and you watch your parents put more time into them. Maybe they're allowed to have things and do things that you weren't allowed to have or do or looked at in a way that was admiring and you don't receive that same treatment. But after becoming an adult and going through the process of recognizing what it is and going through the healing process of what you're left with coming out of these relationships, you may realize that you are the lucky one. You were the one that was able to see through it, to not conform to it and to not to grow up to be a narcissist yourself. The golden or favored child is more likely to grow up and become a narcissist. Maybe now you might feel that you were spared. So something that tormented you can become something you're so grateful for, realizing how much worse it could have been. But never does that make any of it okay. Realizing that hurting people hurt people and it's a mental health problem. It's not that you are unlovable and not good enough and is a, is a very great place to start for your healing work that can be done to have a happier, healthier life. Learning how to find your self-worth from within, when you realize that no one's coming for you to save you, it forces you to find it from within, which feels so much better than getting it from an outside source, relying on, relying on other people. A therapist can help with this. If you are stuck in a victim mindset, which was me for a long time, it will help to step out of that and to see yourself as a strong individual. Realize you have walked through darkness and you still have the ability to have empathy, self-assess, be accountable for your actions. You have control over your life moving forward. Learning how to have healthy boundaries with the narcissistic people in your life to not be manipulated anymore. I would love to hear your stories. Everyone's experiences are different. Please feel free to leave a comment describing some of the things that you went through and have overcome. Let me know if you would like me to talk about something specific. What were some of your aha validating moments? I hope this helps. Please don't forget to subscribe and like. I love you all.